Beatles Beans today. It's David coming to you from the Beatles Corner. We are collecting the Beatles 101, getting to the last Canon Beatles album in, you know, the BC 13 box set. And I saved this one for last because it's quite the effort. It's a double album. <laughs> Didn't know how I was going to go about this or the results in the in the side by side by side by side by side comparison so of course it is the white album do i really have to hold up the album cover it's the white album it's a blank white cover that says the beals embossed in white on the cover so um this is an interesting pretty interesting comparison so i have three u.s pressings so i've got I'm not going to go through matrix numbers except for the UK pressing. Um, but I have the UK pressing, which I held up, is a dash one, dash three, dash one, dash four, uh, two, dash one, dash three, dash one, dash two pressing, which means if you don't know, in the matrix number in the runout groove, side one ends in dash one, side two ends in dash three so on and so forth. Um, and the interesting thing about, I found <laughs> with this box set is that it seems like none of the records were played. Maybe a couple of them, but the white out, this is, I have a feeling I'm the first person to play this copy of the white album. Why do I say that? The spindle hole was really tight on it. So, it took a little bit of effort to get it worked onto the turntable. So um, that's what, so that's the white album I have. It's a 1978 pressing on Apple. Um, I also have three USA pressings from 1968 slash 1969. So I have the first Los Angeles pressing and the first and second Scranton pressings. Um, on Apple, three different versions. And then I have, let me grab it. Not that I have to hold it up, but the 2018 uh, anniversary edition with the new stereo mix by Giles Morton. Um, I obviously, I do not have the 2012 um, remaster on vinyl. I, I know it was a 2009 digital remaster but i don't have the vinyl edition i do have the 19 late 80s first cd uh version but i didn't do that because i want to keep it as a vinyl shootout <clears throat> so these are the five pressings that i have i will give you my impressions of each one of them starting with Come on! Do, 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 do. Oh, not that kind of impression. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. Anyway, sorry. We're having a little heat wave <laughs> this week here in Ohio. So, oh, it's been a day. Sorry. So, let you know, I'm going to go, hmm, I'm going to go in order of, I don't know, maybe, I don't want to do worst to, to best. I'm just going to kind of go through what I have heard. So um, let's just start with the UK pressing from 1978. And I thought that this was such a well-balanced um, sounding version of the album. Uh, it great. I mean, the treble and the bass, it was, it wasn't like it was bass heavy or treble heavy. It was just really well balanced. It sounded natural, warm, inviting. <clears throat> and I also um, heard stuff that I've never, I don't recall hearing, even when I listened to my US version. There's stuff that I heard in the mix that I didn't really hear over the years on my United States pressings. Um, like, like the piano on back in the USSR, I guess subconsciously I always knew it was there and I kind of heard it in the mix, but it, it was pretty prominent in the mix. Helter Skelter sounds loud, really balanced, 
sounds like the rocker that the band, well, Paul McCartney in particular, was going for. And then followed by Long, Long, Long. At it, there is a nice, not very abrupt change in the volume, but um, Long, Long, Long came in nice and soft and then built up to a crescendo um, as the song went on, just as examples. Other songs, I, I like the rock type songs on this album. So everybody's got something to hide except for me and my monkey. So well balanced, rocking out. That that bass when it kicks in at the end, ba -dum -bum -bum -ba -dum -ba -dum -bum -bum. just great. <laughs> okay, no more impressions, David. Um, I'm gonna next go to the USA pressings, and the first Los Angeles pressing um, really sounds excellent in my opinion, but some of the instruments sounded buried in the mix. And it's like compared, I mean, on its own, up until now, I would say that first LA pressing was probably, in my opinion, the best sounding pressing of the album that I had. But, you know, compared to the British version and the 2012 version, uh, yeah, the 2018 version, um, this thing sounded buried in the mix. And then with the Scranton pressings, even more so. Um, and that's probably because uh, EMI at Abbey Road made a copy of you know the tapes to send to the United States. The United States, the engineers there, probably remastered and did some fiddling with them. Um, you know, to make it more suitable for American audiences, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and then from Hollywood, L.A., then they made a dupe of those tapes and sent them to, to the other pressing plants in the United States, such as Scranton. So the Scranton pressings were a little bit more muddy than the Hollywood L.A. pressing. But, you know, again, the instruments sound, there's... They sound muddy, they, they're muddled, there's something missing. So, something that I've always noticed on any U.S. pressing of the White Album that I've had, which also includes um, a 1976 Orange Label, Capital Orange Label pressing, which I no longer have. So you go from Helter Skelter, and then Long, 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 it's barely audible. And... I never realized just how beautiful that song is. <laughs> so, you know, it was a nice experience hearing that. And so now on to the 2018 anniversary remix. It to me it sounds great. It sounds balanced, but it is a slight remix of the album. Some obscure sounds are brought up in the mix. Um on some of the songs. So, Helter Skelter a lot of the, like the the squeak, I guess, squeaking and beeping, it's a bit more forward in the mix. Uh, the guitars at the end, um, be before the fade down, they sound kind of buried back into the mix, or, you know, but it does sound like a more modern version of the album. And getting back to helter skelter and long 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 because i like to focus on it you know some something specific on each of these albums long 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 seemed to be at like a normal volume so giles martin it sounded like brought the volume up which you know it sound i liked it because i've always glossed over that song but the you know but then listening to it again, going back to the British pressing, was that you have this rock and roll, this hard rock, Helter Skelter, and then, how, how do I say it? And then you go to basically at the same volume level, this soft, beautiful song. So I appreciate Long, Long, Long as a song more <laughs> now than I ever did, but then the the change in volume originally on the British version kind of makes it softens up long 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 a bit more than 
I guess, on the, the remaster remix. And like I said, on the U.S. versions of the album, I've always glossed over it. It's like this is a throwaway song, but it's actually a beautiful song once you get to listen to it. Um, so I did on the 2018 remaster remix, I grew to appreciate that song even more than I ever had. So there you go. Um, as far as what I would grab if I want to list, give this album a listen, ultimately for me, it would be the British pressing from 1978. But I gotta say the 2018 anniversary remix by Giles Martin, if I want to hear, if I, if I'm not picky about um, nuances, I would probably play that, you know, more so. My only beef with the 2018 remix is that I wish he had done with the White Album what he did with Sgt. Pepper and make it more like, you know, the mono mix brought into, you know, made into stereo. Uh, so kind of like a, a different version of the album. And, and I really enjoy listening to that 2017 anniversary remix that he did of Sgt. Pepper for that reason. So there you go. Just some of my thoughts on the White Album. Uh, really cool listening to these albums. For the most part for me, I didn't have these original British copies and pressings of these albums. So it was a real treat for me uh, to listen to it. I'm going to do a video just summing up what I think of the BC-13 from 1970 as a whole. So until next time, it's me, David, coming to you from the Beatles Corner. We are collecting Beatles 101. We will catch you soon. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the flip side and happy collecting. Thanks again.